All right, welcome back, Weld Bead Placement. This is part two on Groove Welds. Uh, it's going to be a little bit longer. Didn't feel like dragging it out to three parts. I hope this was useful to you guys, and uh, enjoy the show. All right, so let's move on to uh, groove welding with backing. So, and this one is particularly, I'm thinking the your root layer, and this is actually what sparked the question off of the other videos and how you can do it. So on top here I'm going to just say that this is a single pass first layer. And on bottom I'm going to do a multi pass first layer. What it is, is sometimes when you have your fitter or whoever tax up this joint a lot of times there's nobody to blame but yourself is is this root opening is too wide and you you're faced with the question in your head okay I need this to pass whatever UT is common x-ray it has to pass so do I risk it and make it a one a one pass layer or a two pass layer so if you're making it a one pass layer you are either really you're risking the chance of really humping up if you're doing it like a stringer style that you won't have you won't be able to make a really good fusion with your hot pass and that would look something like like this so you you end up getting good fusion in both toes but you leave what's commonly referred to and as far as my pipe welding instructors and classes that I took they call these wagon tracks because you know you could drive a wagon down them when ideally you want to ideally you want your first your root pass to still I guess lay flat in there and uh, but so how can you avoid that altogether if you had the bad fit up is you can just give yourself the opportunity and good to good I guess land to do a two pass root layer and uh, it's not it's not frowned upon it's not something I mean I really don't think you'll catch any slack over it and it's not going to be a deal breaker especially if you have a backing so I think um, I'm also just gonna go ahead and use this one to say I mean as far as different layer passes and layers I mean like with say on this you can do say you're weaving so you got your root pass your root layer your hot layer maybe you get your next fill layer or your first fill layer maybe that one works out for you as a weave now you're starting to get a little wide in your weave you don't really you can't keep that puddle controlled where you want it so what you do now is is you you do you can still do like a weave but you just you're not going to the extent of the your joint so you weave that spot and then you come back and you weave this spot so then it's it's like again I say you're still weaving you just have a tighter weave and uh and you would again come out here and do a weave like something like that. I've seen that done before, I've done that before. It works just fine versus doing a whole bunch of, uh, you know, Stringers, yeah. 
Now don't get me wrong, this is a just left-handed logic, but you can weld these right-handed as well, you know, you come from this side and So here, here's another thing I'd like to point out as was addressed is that uh, I, think, I think originally when I did this he was saying he was, the viewer was confused and that I did A, a two pass layer on my root but they were saying it's like well what's they used, I was taught two or one then two then three and then you cap with four and so okay well that's probably your traditional uh, you may have Say you're using eighth inch electrode on three eighths or half inch plate. That's probably what's going on. But when you get into some thicker plate, you're not going to do this in four passes. You know, you, if you're stringering, it's just not going to be done. So, all right. I guess this brings me on to uh, groove welds without backing. Uh, and really what I'm just going to talk about a few things here because of once you get your root pass in or some other things it's the same as with a uh, with back I, I think yeah you can see pretty much I made this joint a little bit smaller root opening compared to this one so you hopefully you know you can make your your root pass in one weld or one pass so that's a, that's the ideal situation right there especially without backing is that you do it in one pass now the idea is that when you have a root opening that's too wide open and you just you're not going to be able to do that in one pass what what can you do to take care of this problem as well? The a typical thing, and you can do, I've seen this done with, uh, I mean, most of the time your root pass is uh, short circuit MIG or 6010 or something, or TIG, but say it's 6010, right? So on this one, I would do a 7018 depending on your material of course but I would do what's commonly an overlay or or buttering if it's kind of like a light material I'd say it's kind of it's considered padding you're just padding the joint up so you start padding this joint up like that to bring it closer into tolerance now if you if you think you can make this weld then you go ahead and make this root pass or you can do the same thing on this side if you want and then you can come back in with a cutting wheel and put like a your root face on there say another thing that you might run into is if you're actually this is what I would call buttering is when you have dissimilar materials and you kind of want a buffer material typically a stainless material and you would put on another layer and what this does it just provides so that the material you're using from this to weld over here is not going to have very much admixture with this material and so if again this is for a dissimilar type joint but then you would go in and you would weld your root open root here and from here on out uh, if it's similar material you would probably you may do a weave if it's in the right position to do a weave but if it's dissimilar material uh, I would typically say that you would be doing stringers here because with a stringer you're less likely to uh, bring in a lot of admixture because of lower heat inputs whereas if you weave it you have a lot higher heat input 
and you're pulling in more, you're melting more of this base material and that's going to increase the admixture so it may be against what you're trying to do I guess is what I'm trying to say. And you may see, okay, well wait, what's happening? I'm, I'm running high here and low here, so you might end up coming back and starting on this side and just see there okay that's kind of a correction right there is you don't have to make a complete a complete layer but consider that like a con a correction and then you can come back and then you can come and put your cap pass on So there's just a, a different way of looking at how you can layer things in, whether you need to uh, make up for a bad fit up or if you're going to butter a joint for dissimilar metals. It's uh, one way to look at groove weld without uh, backing and then of course I'll just finish out this one again depending on position. You can weave the majority of the joint. Alright, so I think this brings me to my last uh, detail here and it's uh, another groove weld. Uh, I think that I mean, you'll see it can be with backing or without backing. I just drew this one with. And I kind of drew it a little large just to try and do some detail work. More for you guys so that you can see. So, okay, so you put in your first pass. And then you put in your second pass, your third pass. So, but now you're looking at putting in three passes for this next layer. So, right here you got number four. Instead of coming, just keep going across and say five, what you're going to do is you're going to come in from this side, and that's your fifth one. So, then when you put your sixth one in the middle, what you're doing this, the melting and the heat of the sixth bead it comes through and uh, partially tempers the fourth and the fifth pass and a little bit of the third pass and so uh, you just that's the way you would continue this joint say seven so once you get up to your cap pass and you get down and you do your temper beads all the way into the middle, uh, something that you'll see is that a lot of times you just leave it as is. You got a lot of heat in this weld that's kind of stress relieving this, t this last bead. Uh, other times you might see that they put another bead on top of it to temper that and then they grind that bead off and, and they go with that. So. Uh, this is temper bead welding. Uh, again, if it's done with stringers, it can be done in all positions. If it's done with, uh, not that weaving is common with temper bead, but uh, weaving, you're kind of limiting yourself outside of uh, 2Gs and 2Fs and stuff like that. So that's a common thing that you'll see with. Uh, I guess tool steels if you're leaving something in an as welded condition you'll see it some uh, some of your ferritic welding um, high strength creep enhanced ferritic steels and uh, some things like that so that's just this is all just to go to show that there's lots of difference <laughs> ways that you'll find somebody will put in a weld bead 
And uh, I guess another thing, just while I'm here to hit on it, uh, I deal with a lot of like people that specify beads versus layers, and you deal with it in German codes and and European and British codes and all these different things. And so it's like, well, what do you mean? Especially like if you have to deal with uh, if you're doing Sharpie testing, and then all of a sudden you have to wonder about heat inputs. So they'll say it's like oh well there's this much heat per layer it's like is a layer or a pass or a bead or terminology wise is that you have like your say two and three here that's two passes or two weld beads but it's one layer of welding so that's just another I guess freebie on that as if this whole thing's not free to you so I hope that this helps a little bit. If you like it, like it, comment on it. If you see something, let me know in the comments anything you want to see, something like this, and I will try and get to it and get on it. And that's it. And thank you very much for lasting this long. I know it's uh, probably been pretty unbearable. <laughs>